So I'm not really <laughs> checking these videos as I'm watching them, so hopefully I didn't say anything too embarrassing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and I noticed that this uh, some of the graphics are getting messed up, but I hope this is still coming across with the, the points I'm trying to make and the, the lectures I'm making here. Um, I forgot to mention that I <laughs> we, we need to talk about groups, but that's okay. I'll talk about it later after I talk about automated fixtures. Um, groups will help you program faster, and we need to talk about pallets as well down the road, and they'll help you program faster. Um, keeping in mind that you need to practice this on your computer without the controller or with something because speed will become everything. This is like a piano. You need to practice it. I would recommend for the first month that you have this, spend 15 to 30 minutes a day figuring this out, just playing with it after you watch these videos, of course, so that way you kind of have an idea of what's going on. In fact, watch like the first five, eight, play with it, do it over and over and over again. Get to know where these buttons are at because you're going to get to a show site with a blank hog sometimes and you're not going to know where any of these buttons are at and you're going to be pro programmed really slow and they're going to be, you know, there might be someone down your throat, you know, saying, hey, we got to open the doors, the light's programmed. And you've got to be able to be quick on your toes with these. Um, if, you, you know, you're at like a, a club and you're going to work with the same fixtures, uh, you may not need to know it as quickly, but it's still nice to know. After you really get to use, get you know, practice it every day for about a month, a month and a half, you're going to be really good at this. You're going to become an expert, which is great, and that's what we want. Um, and it's kind of nice to know that that's all it takes. Anyway, it's been about a minute and a half on that, I'm running out of time. So to first, before we talk about automated fixtures, you have to understand these jog wheels because they're going to be everything to your programming, even with other fixtures other than automated fixtures. So. You, you notice this, uh, let's actually look at the screen, the hog screen. You see these little boxes? There's a box, here's a box, and there's another box. Um, it's just above the command line here. And notice there's four of them. Notice there's four jog wheels. You probably figured it out already. <laughs> but I'm going to say, these jog wheels uh, correlate with each box. The first jog wheel with the first box, and so on. Now, if I selected, remember those uh, fixtures in the back, 27 through 39, uh, those down lights? Oh, yeah, highlight. Those guys. Um, you can actually, you, uh, you notice that when I selected them, they have an intensity value that you can make. Well, I can use a jog wheel and just slide it up. And you'll notice that as I'm moving the jog wheel around, you'll notice the value change. This can actually help you. I, I for intensity values, I very rarely use it. For example, the time I would use it is I would go like at 50, and I'm like at 50 enter, and it's at 50%. I go, yeah, it's not bright enough, or it's too bright, it's too harsh. I'm a little softer. I'll take the jog wheel and I'll just slide it down a little bit, and let's say down, you know, I just slide it down and soften it up a little bit. Anyway, hit clear. That's what happens. I'm going to hit clear, and we're going to start talking about automated fixtures. The first group of automated fixtures on here on this club setup are fixtures 1 through 10 that we patched in earlier. Um, hit the highlight button. Oh, there they are. Highlight. Intensity value. I'll just set them at full. Enter. And now, as you notice with these buttons, uh, there's more of these. There's intensity, position, color, beam. As I select through them, uh, you'll notice the, the light changes. Kind of important to note. Um, <laughs> it's going to become useful to, to, to remember which feature you're working with. Uh, I'm on intensity, and you'll notice there's intensity, pan, tilt, strobe. Uh, strobe, uh, you'll uh, basically if you rotate that on that fourth one, it's going to change the strobe value. Um, that's about full, I think. That's at 10 hertz. The visualizer is not that great with strobe. It's a little funky with it, but you'll get the idea with the visualizer. And I can actually slow down the strobe. Uh, let's see. And as these two middle ones, as you'll notice, they're set to pan and tilt. And remember, I'm just on my intensity button right now. But I can just take the pan, slide it up, and I can even mess with the tilt. Uh, yeah, just basically I'm messing with it as a whole group. I can even select one fixture to do that. I'm going to hit clear, and I can hit fixture one at full. And same values, as you notice on here. It's just I'm selected one fixture, that's it. So, and it's actually, remember, uh, remember the programmer, keep that in the back of your mind. This is all being saved in the programmer. 
I'm going to go back to that full group of fixtures though. Fixtures, whoops, fixtures 1 through 10, enter. Uh, I said 1 through 103, I had too many buttons. 1 through 10, enter, fat fingers at full. I'm going to tilt them up. And let me show you some other cool features about this. Um, there's the position. What the position does is that it just keeps the intensity in the first uh, wheel, but I have position and tilt. Some fixtures have what's called fine tilt. That is a, it moves it ever so slightly. You'll see what I mean whenever you ever get a chance to play with it. Um, it just, it moves ever so slightly. It's a fine tilt. It's our fine pan and fine tilt. It's just the best way to describe it. You would use those when you're like a thousand feet away from the source that you're shining this on. You need to shine it, let's say, a person or a certain object. You can use, and the pan and tilt is, you know, you, you move it over slightly and it's just too far. You can use the fine tilt to just barely nudge it over. Um, if so, and you can get the fine tilt if it has it by keep pressing position, just tapping that button over and over again. Uh, color, I just hit the color button, as you noticed over here. It's in blue now. All these change to these wheels change to colored features, uh, and I can hit the beam. We're going to uh, let's see here. So, um, as you notice here, it, I've got a beam shape. Really, beam button is going to deal with like um, it's going to deal with beam shape, <laughs> just different beam features that that fixture will have. Notice as you go through these intensity, oops, what did I see here? Intensity, position, color, beam. They're going to do different things uh, per the fixture. Some fixtures have uh, things like beam shape, uh, or excuse me, have the zoom. Some fixtures won't. The ones I have selected have these fixtures have a beam shape, which I think is a, uh, a zoom. It makes it wider. Um, they have a frost as well. You'll see frost on nice fixtures, on like fixtures like the Elation 575, the Mac 2K, I believe, uh, pretty sure would, or the new Mac Vipers, the Mac 3s, and all that stuff. There is a Mac 3. Uh, more expensive fixtures, you'll see them have frost. What, if you don't know what frost is, the quick answer to that is it's uh, it's a diffuser. Um, you can you can actually get it as a gel um, for your for your traditional lights. Um, I've even seen put over LED lights to soften up and blend together the colors a little better if you're trying to show them on faces. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, just buy a better light or just use a regular light bulb. Um, but the diffuser, what it does, it breaks up the light. It softens it up. It, you have to really see it to, to know what's going on. Uh, photographers use that. If you've ever taken a family photo and you see those big lights that are shining at you and there's that kind of clear uh, frosty looking plastic or stuff that's over the light. That's what they're doing is they're softening up the light so it's not so hard. Uh, go to a, a, a theater lighting store, ask them to show, do a demonstration what frost is if you don't know what it is and it'll, it'll click really quickly. Automated fixtures are some that are awesome enough to have frost. <laughs> so um, also if I keep clicking beam you'll notice that it, it changes um, to other settings. Uh, let's see like um, I notice if, if you select other fixtures, you'll have gobos as well. Um, in fact, let's if I, uh, let's clear this out. If I select fixtures um, one through, um, excuse me, clear that out. If I select fixtures eleven through eighteen, uh, highlight them to show you what I'm talking about. I'll set them at full. And as you notice, this actually has. Uh, let's see. There we go. <laughs> At full. You notice that there's my gobo features. Bam, there they are. And I can actually just rotate them to go through the different gobos. Um, let me show it here just to prove it. Look at my different gobos. And I'm going to stop this and we'll continue on the next video in a sec.